Hi, I'm Christopher Gellin and I make knives. Continuing on with the Falling Star project. Um, we're trying to get ready for the Blade Show. Blade Show is coming up in four weeks, uh, June 1st, 2018. I'm trying to get six of my knives ready to take down to the Blade Show. So yesterday I cut out all the, my bar stock and I spent all day and I got them flat and parallel uh, using the Arbor Press and a surface grinder. And today, what we're going to do is we're going to take this bar stock and machine it into a blade blank. Or machine a blade. Okay, so welcome back to my workbench. Um, what I'm going to show you here, this is my blade fixture. And um, what this is, is a piece of just Mike 6 that I have uh, cut off. Uh, Mike 6 is cast aluminum. It's been precision ground that is parallel. It's about an inch thick. And what I've done is I've tapped this uh, Mike 6 with a 10 by 24 tap. And this is how I'm attaching my um, blade stock to, to, my, um, to my blade jig. You can see here I use a number 10 by 24 screw. And the clamps that I use to hold it down, this is just old blades, uh, the pivot and the stop pins that um, I turn into clamps. And I locate <coughs> where to put the blade stock by using these stop pins. This is just a 5 32nd stop pin that I use for a dowel rod that you can see I put into locating holes on the jig. And then very quickly I can locate um, where the bar stock um, goes so then I can clamp it down and as I'm clamping it down you want to make sure that it's flat so I use a 4000 filler gauge and what I'll do is I'll go around the whole part and make sure that it doesn't go underneath um, make sure that it doesn't go underneath the bar stock at all and you don't want there to be any space at all so for example, right here, uh, that's not flat. That's not down, that's a problem. Uh, I did set this top corner as my G54, and I used the top of the um, fixture as my uh, G54 zero in the Z axis. So even though you have various thicknesses of bar stock, um, it shouldn't affect the programming because your G54 zero is the top of the aluminum jig. I hope that makes sense. And I've already flattened these. I flattened these on the um, surface grinder. I had some issues with them, really super bowing that I couldn't hardly get out with the Arbor Press. And I actually, some of these I had to put back into the uh, to the kiln and stress relieve them. And so I have a few various thicknesses here. Um, I designed these in strips so that I could put a few of them on the table. The idea was that you could take one of these off and be attaching it uh, while the machine's making, working on another one. Uh, so as I was saying, this is my base plate. This allows me to very quickly um, change out my fixtures for inlays to blades. Blade fixture attaches to the base plate using a um, quarter inch bolt. So again, you want to make sure that this is down, that there's no um, space at all in between the base plate and the fixture. You want to make sure that it's down and flat. And so I stoned the base plate, I stoned the bottom of the jig, um, cleaned it off, put it on there on, the, on locating dowels. There's locating dowels underneath this. And then you want to check it with the filler gauge. I just used a 4,000 filler gauge here, making sure that it's down. This won't slide underneath there. So I know that this is flat. So at this time, the air dryer should be cold. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, turn on the Haas, warm it up, we'll change the tools in the carousel, establish a new G54, 
and start making chips. It's alive. It's alive. Here's my aluminum fixture plate. It's resting on the base plate. The base plate allows me to more rapidly change out my aluminum fixtures. They locate on um, steel dowel pins and then bolt to the table. That way I can very um, be loading parts on one fixture. For example, here's my pocket clip fixture. It takes a long time to load that. While the machine's making chips, it just helps me as a one-man shop um, to try to stay somewhat competitive. So I haven't run the machine for a few days, so while this machine warms up, I'm going to um, check the coolant. And I'm going to change all the tools in the carousel and we'll get to making some, some blades. While I'm changing out tools here, very quickly, I really like these MA Ford reamers. All I'm doing is I'm drilling and reaming through the bar stock at the pivot location and then I'm going to attach a 10 by 24 screw through the pivot hole uh, to remove the clamps. So now that the um, holes have been drilled undersized, I just have a quick tool break check to make sure that this undersized drill bit did not break. Uh, so it's going to probe the wrench shawl. As soon as it knows that the tool is not broken, it'll put it away and get the next tool. This is just a quick chamfer uh, before the reamer. Now we'll ream the pivot to the correct size. And so the next step is to attach this bar stock to the fixture itself. I'm um, using 10 by 24 screws. I'm just going down through the pivot hole. And then I'll take off these clamps. <clears throat> and now this is pro uh, program two. We're going to go through and we're going to load these tools into the tool carousel. Tool one needs to be the chamfer mill. Tool six needs to be a 125 drill. Tool seven, a 147 drill. And then um, here's a brief description of what the program is going to do. So this next program is spotting all the holes before it gets into the drilling. What this is, this is the stop pin locations and the jimping. Uh, this is going to ensure that this knife locks up perfect, assuming I can grind the lock correctly. That's the whole clincher. All the blades coming off the VMC are perfect within ten thousandths of an inch. You just have to grind them to match. So now we're going to under drill size the stop pin and I will later ream this. So we're doing a quick tool check break and once the machine knows that there's a hole to drill it will not break the reamer. Now we're doing a quick chamfer before we ream the holes. Now we're reaming the stop pin holes to the final dimension. By using the VMC we ensure the knife will open and close properly on the stop pin in the open and close position. And 
Now we're going to drill the jimping. This is so that your thumb can get a better purchase on the knife if you're wearing gloves. Or if your hand's covered in blood or slime or mud or something to that effect. This ensures that the knife is held securely in the hand. A lot of guys don't like jimping. I like jimping. Somewhere I read you're supposed to only have three holes. But I don't know if that's true or just something that the, you have to have for the guild. I don't think there's any rules to make a knife. You just make them like you want them. The coolant that I'm using is Coolrite 2290. It's designed specifically for stainless steels and exotic metals like titanium, zirconium, all that good stuff. After the jimping has been drilled, it's going to get a smaller tool bit and put tiny jimping on the flipper tab. I've often thought about removing the jimping on the flipper tab, but I think it helps my knives flip better. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting tiny little jimping on the flipper tab. And this is a theory. But I believe that by doing so, you get better friction between your finger and the flipper tab and more kinetic energy will be transferred um, to break the detent ball. And I don't have any way of proving that. That's just a theory. But it takes some time, but I, I think it helps improve the knife. I think it helps it flip better. I just drilled the flipper tab jumping. And now we're going to chamfer everything so it doesn't cut your fingers to hell when you're when you're hitting this, you know. And up here too, it won't it won't uh, it'll it's got bite. It'll grip your thumb great, but it won't hurt you. And that's what the machine's doing now. It's going in there and chamfering all the all the holes it just drilled. And so what the machine has done is it has drilled all the holes for the um, for the jumping on the top of the knife that's what these holes are this is the stop pin location holes for the open and close position and these tiny holes here is for the jumping on the flipper tab now what most makers will do is they'll have all this water jetted out for them and then they'll put it in a machine like a gardener machine and it'll double disc grind this to make it perfectly flat and parallel I started with flat and parallel, and then my fixture is flat and parallel, and so I'm able to do it this way. I'm able to program everything. Z-axis is off the top of this fixture. Your chamfers will come out the same because the machine is thinking in, in terms of how high it is in elevation above this fixture, above this imaginary plane. It's not imaginary, it's real. It's on top of this fixture. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to profile this out and make a blade, uh, a blade blank. And I'm gonna do that with a 188. I use a 188s all the time. It's basically gonna come in, come around, and, and cut out this blade blank. And the blade blank will have perfectly aligned pivots and stop pins to ensure that it opens and closes in the correct um, position. And so we're coming up on 15 minutes, so I'm gonna keep this short. Um, you can see that I have profiled out um, two blade blanks. Uh, the next thing I would do is flip them over and machine uh, the back side. Um, and so what I have is a blade blank, and here's what the end result of that will look like. <clears throat> you can see it's just a blade blank, and from here you have two options. You can either grind the bevels on the KMG on the 2x72 um, belt grinder. Uh, KMG is a knife making grinder. And I do that sometimes. Another option you have is to uh, machine out your bevels. I also do that. I use both methods. And I will show you both in two separate videos in the future. <clears throat> uh, one thing to note, due to time constraints, I program this just on what's called a mirror. It's a very nice way to start out your programming. You only have to program one part. And in the, the mirror is just a slave to the first one. Obviously, my jig can do up to eight knives at a time. Uh, I do, in fact, make eight knives at a time. <laughs>
excuse me. And we have more processes to do. We have to make the hole for the thumb stud. We have to engrave this. We have to surface grind it down to a specified thickness. And that's a great uh, opening into new topics of like mathematics for the knife maker, how to determine your feeds and speeds. And uh, so we'll cover all these topics and more in future videos. So if you're into this sort of thing, please like my video, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Again, my name is Christopher Gillen, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.